During the pandemic, we're very conscious that people affected by it go far beyond the programmes that we deliver ourselves. We had an inquiry from a nurse on behalf of one of the hospitals in Glasgow, and as a result of that, we were able to deliver a free tuck shop service for many weeks during the summer for both Glasgow Royal Infirmary and the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital for some key wards that were working with a lot of people. Because of the COVID restrictions, it meant that those patients were unable to receive visits from loved ones and also the shops within the hospitals were closed. So we managed to buy loads of word searches, crossword books, juice, crisps, snacks, chocolate bars, you name it. We piled our cars high and with also the support of United Wholesale and fantastic fundraising from our supporters, donated hundreds and hundreds of items towards at those two hospitals. And it's great that we were able to really make life better, a little better for the patients in those hospitals, which um, must have been such a difficult time. COVID-19 has meant that unfortunately we've had to postpone many of our Dream Fund experiences. But what we have been doing throughout the period is engaging with those supporters on the waiting list and reacting to, to people who may have relatives or who are impacted by COVID-19 over recent times and arrange special video messages or letters of support from the first team squad. So we really do try and pull out the stops when it's needed through the Dream Fund and we've been doing our best to keep people's spirits up and sending our thoughts and best wishes during the recent times. During the lockdown I ended up in hospital in intensive care. I was in intensive care for nine days on the ventilator. The family would get told to take hour by hour, but I came out of it. Hello Derek, I just wanted to send you a little video message pal, just to let you know that everyone at Rangers is right behind you now. I know you're in hospital and we just wanted to all send our best and try and put a smile on your face. You take care of yourself pal, all the best. That's gave you a boost. I think at first I thought I was imagining it. Well you think you've just dreamt or something. We're really proud to have a partnership with UNICEF and they've been our international partner for over 10 years now. And during that time we've actually been able to support up to 2 million children and their families, which is a, just an incredible number. But really the numbers of people in the world who are vulnerable, particularly children, are you know, depressingly large. And we were able to redirect a £15,000 donation that we made to UNICEF earlier this season in order to help their global appeal as a result of COVID. And that could mean that up to 15,000 face masks are being donated to health professionals in some of the world's most challenging areas so that those health workers are able to have access to PPE when they otherwise might not have been able to. The local community here in Govan is really important to the Foundation too. And during the last few months, we were delighted to be able to support a number of initiatives, one of which was a very generous donation from the Stephen Gerrard Foundation of £5,000, which we were able to provide to Govan Youth Information Project, who were involved in a collaborative approach to provide free meal service every day for young people and their families in the local area. And actually, the funding of £5,000 enabled the purchase of around 1,500 meals, and that was delivered over a period of three weeks. So a really important service, which has continued beyond that for a number of weeks. I think how the Foundation responded helped the community, added some much-needed support, and we at JIP are very grateful. I've been really engaged with a project called the Govan Thriving Place, initiative and that brings lots of local organisations with the council to try and come together and make a difference for the people of Govan and thanks to some Scottish government support that's been coming in during the Covid pandemic we've been collaborating to try and ensure that different projects in the local area are making a difference where it's needed most at the moment. We often talk about the Rangers family at the Rangers Charity Foundation and I think the last few months in the Covid pandemic has really proved what a genuine family that is, both within the Foundation team, who I'm incredibly proud of for the way that they've responded together and to try and make a difference and to support each other at a difficult time, but also our supporters and funders and people out in the community that we engage with. I think we're all facing a challenging time and there are uncertainties in the future 
but I'm hugely proud of the Rangers Charity Foundation's work and we're really looking forward to getting all our programmes going again as soon as it's safe to do so, so that we can continue to make a real difference and tangible difference to people locally and far beyond.